welcome back everyone we will be starting our uh, technical session 2 in that the first technical talk will be on pmfme scheme guidelines and features myself i am going to take a session basically this is the scheme implemented by mbfpi to formalize the micro food processing sector so coming to the objectives of the scheme it is providing increased access in terms of loan by the existing micro food processing entrepreneurs it further aims in supporting fpos shgs and cooperatives also uh, this is providing technical hand holding support to the micro enterprises which will help in formalizing the micro food processing sector it also focuses on strengthening of the institutions at state level district level research institutions in the food processing sector then it also aims on increased access to common services like the incubation facility at district level it is also one of the key components of the scheme which will be covered briefly in the next slides the scheme also envisages on formalizing the unorganized micro enterprises fpos and shgs to make investment and upscale their operations thereby it supports for the transition of existing 2 lakh enterprises into formal network the major features of the scheme actually it is based on the odop approach and uh, here we are talking about rice processing and value addition whereas rice is one of the odop of the scheme for 11 states the total outlay of the scheme include rupees 10000 crore for a period of 5 years up to 2025 so here you can see the sharing pattern uh, whereas the government of india mfp is directly implementing the scheme along with uh, state nodal officials and district level partners are also there so coming to the benefits of the scheme through this scheme we are providing the funding support for the upgradation of existing micro units as well as new units in terms of credit linked subsidy of 35 percentage with a maximum ceiling of 10 lakh rupees in that the beneficiary contributions should be minimum of 10 percentage of the project cost with balance being availed as loan from the bank in addition seed capital support is also available to the self help groups up to 40000 rupees and there is a state level marketing and branding support around 50 percentage of the grant for the government organizations so they can apply for the common grant under the scheme and there is a support for establishing common incubation center with 100 percent funding for the government organizations whereas for private institutions 50 percentage funding will be provided under the scheme so the age and the educational qualification as usual 18 years and above no further age limit is required for applying under this scheme and no educational qualification is also required for uh, existing units as well as new units we can apply both under odop and non odop and the enterprise who has um, availed already availed a loan from uh, other subsidy linked schemes also eligible to apply under this scheme and as i said earlier beneficiary contribution should be minimum of 10 percentage of the project cost then the marketing and branding support uh, can be channelized through state nodal agencies so they will be putting up the proposal to the ministry then the further scrutiny process will follow so this is how you can apply under this scheme normally we are processing the application uh, through the online portal on uh, mbfpi i will show you the portal also for individual units we can submit online application directly on the online portal for groups and common infrastructure like common incubation facilities and all we are having a separate uh, online portal at our nitam tanjore website where you can submit your applications then further approval procedures will follow this is the portal of the ministry of food processing industries where you can submit your uh, pmfme application the web link is pmfme.mfpi.gov.in at the right end corner you can see the online registration so basically how the page will look like so in this sign up for new registration so the new re user registration form will appear here you can select uh, whether your application is uh, individual or group application or you are applying for common infrastructure application then you can enter all your personal details then you can register under this scheme Here you can find the list of state nodal agencies. 
and the district nodal points and district resource person basically the district resource person will be taking care of all of your uh, online submission of applications and they will be guiding you till the sanctioning of the subsidy or the bank loan so all the contact details are uploaded here if any district resource person is not available for that particular district you can directly contact district nodal points where the agricultural offices will be there they will be guide you the uh, application process so now we will move on to the another important comp important component of the scheme that is capacity building component actually this component involves providing training to the all the stakeholders of the scheme in the two aspects one is product specific training and the another one is entrepreneurship development the product specific training focuses on the domain knowledge machineries involved packaging aspects value addition with respect to micro enterprises marketing and branding and many more then the entrepreneurship development uh, training focuses on the functional aspects of running a business and uh, starting a business involving uh, various business opportunities dpr preparation which is the most important factor when you are going for any kind of financial support in terms of loan or subsidies and the skills needed for the business management it also covers the regulations and registration processes required for starting an enterprise so the majority of the training are conducted in online mode whereas the beneficiary trainings are conducted in the physical mode for better transmission of knowledge and impact of the content so both you can uh, avail through this training like uh, online mode also you can uh, eligible to attend this training and offline mode also normally beneficiary trainings we are providing through offline mode so talking about the beneficiary trainings uh, we are conducting based on different categories like uh, individual micro food processing enterprises those who have already applied un under the scheme or considered as category 1 beneficiaries and uh, category 2 beneficiaries are those who are interested in knowing further about the product in which they are operating but not interested in applying grant or availing any financial assistance under the scheme so they are considered as category 2 beneficiaries apart from these categories workers of micro food processing sector who want to know more about the product which they are manufacturing and the fpo or shg members uh, who are engaged in the food processing business and uh, interested to further improve or formalize their units or also eligible to attend training under this scheme so coming to the master level training these master level training uh, are conducted by various national level research institute including our niftem tanjavur niftem kundli cftri mysore and sift cochin etc based on the whatever domains they are taking care so under this scheme basically we have nine domains as you can see in the screen these are the levels of training like once master trainers are qualified at the state level these mts will provide training to the district level officials and district level trainers and also district resource persons here the district resource persons are uh, responsible for providing the hand holding support to the beneficiaries for the preparation of dpr online submission of the application and documents needed uh, for the online submission so they are trained by mts about the scheme the, that is the master trainers about the scheme and the food domain sectors in detail so once they are qualified then they will be eligible to provide a uh, support to the beneficiaries the ultimately beneficiaries will get the training from the district level trainers dlts dlts will give training to the various categories of beneficiaries like new and existing enterprises who have already applied or those who wish to apply under this scheme so talking about the district resource person actually drp plays a major role in this application process so the eligibility criteria for the drp is given here so the drp can be he can be drp for more than one district also and he will support you in filling up of application and uh, recommendation to district nodal officers and coordination with bank for uh, sanctioning your loan or subsidy so the drp will help the applicant in filling the application then 
the loan will be sanctioned. So the payment uh, to the DRP is about uh, 20,000 rupees per bank loan sanctioned as per the guidelines released by MYFPI. So these are the food based training modules developed under the scheme which we have uploaded in our Nifton Sanchaur website also. The total products till date we have uploaded the ODOP products, 98 products we have uploaded in our website. So this is the home page of uh, PMFME scheme of Nifton Tanshavur. Where you can see several components of the scheme. Under training material ODOP, we have uh, uploaded products based on the nine major domains. For example, if you click on any of the domains like fruits and vegetable processing, we have uploaded numerous value added products made from different kinds of fruits, which includes processing PPT. demonstration video uh, which will be available in regional languages uh, for better understanding and then packaging technology like what are all the packaging specifications you have to see and you have to uh, put in your product then what are the food safety and FSSA regularities you have to follow in your uh, value added product then model DPR which is the main part of the scheme or any other government subsidies if you want to avail, you have to prepare the DPR. So we have uploaded the model DPR. Based on this, you can customize your DPR uh, according to your product. Then course material is also uploaded in the regional languages as well as in English, where you can find the complete details about the product, including the feasibility and market analysis then the equipment uh, suppliers details then what are all the equipments required for processing the product then all in uh, one course material it is all in the downloadable format which we have uploaded for the benefit of beneficiaries so as i said earlier the incubation component is uh, another uh, important component of the scheme this is the common infrastructure facility Till now, 76 incubation centers are approved across the country. You can find uh, the details of the incubation centers here. Like if you select uh, Tamil Nadu, then in that, in four districts, the incubation centers are available. You can get all the details from here, like uh, what are all the processing lines included in this incubation center. And... Um, you can also apply for the incubation center as a host institute. Government institutions, we are providing 100% funding and for the private institutions, we are providing 50% funding. So those cost norms I will be explaining in the next slides. Basically, it is, um, it is uh, created for, uh, establish it is created for uh, ODOP and allied products for uh, running on the commercial basis. Normally, primary processing line and uh, secondary processing, tertiary processing, packaging storage and the ETP also included in this uh, common incubation facility. Um, it is uh, created for uh, one or more products like one ODOP line and two or three allied lines which is, uh, no, which is non ODOP lines. So again, the domain bifurcation is there. As usual, nine domains we have segregated. Two to four allied product lines will be there. This is, uh, we are running it on commercial basis. Through OM operator. So this is the cost norms released by ministry for setting up the common incubation center. Three to five processing lines has to be there. Capacity should be one to two tons per day for ODOP and allied produce. It includes primary saccade and tertiary processing, then uh, storage and packaging also, which will be having the cost approximate cost of around 200 lakhs. Then flooring and minor renovation, electrical connections and other auxiliary units like boilers, RO plant, ETP. That is also ministry is providing funding around uh, 50 lakh rupees. 
Then if you want to create the food testing laboratory inside that uh, incubation center, 25 lakhs is separately allotted for that. So the total cost will be around 2.75 crores. So these are the basic equipment list uh, which you have to include in your uh, food testing lab considering the micro enterprises. So this is the, uh, the funding details of the scheme. In case of government institutions, 100% or uh, private institutions, 50%. In case of private institutions in tribal districts, 60% from the PMFME scheme and 40% can be availed from private agencies, those who are applying. So these are the web links of the scheme. This I have shown you the application web link at the MYFPI portal. And this is the web link of our uh, Niptem Tanchaur page where you can find all the training materials in the downloadable format. Then uh, the ODOP webinar materials are also available. Where you can find all the webinars conducted so far, the uh, recorded versions are available here. That also you can watch it. And any other guidelines related to this scheme that we have uploaded under, under this tab. So basically, this is about the features and the financial support provided under this scheme. If you have any queries related to this, you can post it in the chat box. I'll reply to it. Thank you so much all for the patient listening. For the next technical talk on food safety and standards for processing of rice based value added products, I would like to invite Mr. Subiraj M, Deputy Government Analyst, Food Safety Department, Government of Kerala. Sir has acquired three master's degree in chemistry and environmental science. He has published 19 research papers in high-impact peer-reviewed international journals and an author of two international books. So he is a subject expert in Food Safety Department, Government of Kerala, and an executive member in Environmental Health and Safety Committee. He is also a scientific advisor for Tamil Nadu Scientific Research Organization. To his credit, Sir acts as the lead auditor and technical manager in various certifying agencies such as ISO 22000, and uh, NABL accreditation. Sir has also served as the assistant professor, College of Engineering, Government of Kerala, and Environmental Specialist, Royal Commission, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We welcome you, sir, to this webinar. Yeah, thank you very much, and thanks for your nice introduction. So, first of all, I give my sincere thanks to Dr. Nathan, sir, the director in charge of NIPTAM, and to the authorities of NIPTAM, to Give me this great opportunity to interact the, uh, uh, with the persons and uh, share my knowledge regarding the rice based value added products. So, you, this is the topic is highly relevant because of rice. India is the major producer for rice, and moreover, we are the largest consumer for rice. So, this topics and moreover, the added products are the product based on the rice, it is most relevant and it is a very important thing for us. Especially if we are thinking in this one, in the food safety and standards point of view, we have to learn or we have to understand something different that is very important. So let us discuss this 20 minutes related to this topic. Okay. I think my screen is visible. Okay, let us continue. So if I am talking about this food safety, it is working in the two tire system. Two tire system means one is the central system and another one is the state system. So central, it is that it is uh, what it is called central. It is controlled by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, and the state, the same Ministry of Health and Family Welfare only. It is the state government control. So the state government, uh, the central government headquarters is in New Delhi. And that there is five regional officers are there. 
and there is each and every one state there is a food safety commissioner he is an ias officer under him there is a designator officer for every district they are controlling for the food safety activities and then food safety officer this is the organization diagram so what i am telling mean there is a central system central there is an office food safety and standards office it is in new delhi and uh, central there is a five officers are there they are controlling with the central licensing and import and export and then state there is a state system state mechanism there is an uh, state mechanism there is a uh, food safety commissioner and then under food safety commissioner there is a district level officers and then after district level officers there is a food safety officer this is that just a introduction of the food safety and standards system so all these things it is working in the food safety and standards act 2006 so what i am telling you there is a different systems are there earlier it is controlled by different orders right now we are coming to the concept of one nation and one food law then we are introducing the food safety and standards act 2006 and it came into force on 2013 and we are now continuing on the food safety and standards act so you see in the food safe in the in the section in the food safety act under section 31 license and registration procedure it is clearly mentioned it is very clear that no person shall commence to carry out any kind of food business without license in this case the food license is mandatory without license anybody cannot do any food business if you are doing the food business you will be punished by the act section 63 it is very clearly told that if you are doing the food business without this act without this license you will be punished 6 month imprisonment with a 5 lakhs fine so it is not a small thing it is a criminal offense if you are doing the food business without license whatever it may be you are the petty retailer or hawker or importer or exporter or e-commerce even e-commerce also you have to take the fssa license so where i will get the license nothing you have to apply online there is a website is there that is known as the foscos.fssa.gov.in you have to apply through online so there is a every district there is an food safety designator officer they will scrutinize your application so there is a designator officer they will issue that there is a two possibilities are there the designator officer the application is okay they will issue the license if any defect is there they may be reject but before rejecting the application they have to give the improvement notice under section 32 and then they have to hear from you in, in some cases if it is a genuine then they can be the license may not be issue otherwise they will issue the license okay so you see the one license is enough for doing the business for example if you are the importer if you are the manufacturer same premises i am talking if you are the wholesaler in the same building so no need to take that separate license for importer separate license for uh, wholesaler separate license for manufacturer not required only single license is enough to survive all the purpose okay and uh, somewhere else i saw that some of the states i visited and i saw that they they have the one of the company i visited they have the two licenses they have the state license also and another one is they have the central license also so such thing is not required just only either state or central license you have to take another or any other license no need for the two license that's what i am telling whatever the kind of business only one license whatever the business you do not take that state and central license either state license or, st- or central license and another one thing if you are taking the license you are manufacturing here and 100 km away there is a storage and at 25 kilometers away you are sold the product in that cases there is a separate license is required same premises only one license is required i think you are clear in this uh, point okay so this is the this is the definition for the what is this is a uh, act for this uh, licensing it will be very clearly told that in case the designated officer rejected your application 
if you are not satisfied with the rejection then you may appeal to the state food safety commission in the concerned states then they may be consider the application and then the license act application may be activated okay this is the condition. act is a very very important after the act what happen there is a several regulations are there food safety regulations so if you are see there is a 22 regulations are there most of the regulations are relevant for this food safety uh, that means rice you see that food fortification it is there you see that uh, 12 food fortification so if you are doing the fortification so this you have to comply with the regulation 12 if you are going for the organic production organic that is jaivik bharat we have if you are going for the uh, organic then you have to comply on the food safety and standards organic regulation if we are packing that on then you have to follow the 20 you see food safety and standard labeling and display regulation if you are preparing the food for the kids or children then you have to follow the food for infant nutrition so each and every one is their own identity and uh, all the things it is related to rice also so if you are importing the rice then you have to follow the procedure in food safety and standards import regulation 2017 so our time is very limited that's why i am mainly concentrate on food safety license i already told that license is very important and what are the products if any problem is coming then you will be punished by the act and what is the standards for this products so these are the two things right now i am going to these are the things i am going to discuss with you okay so i already told that food safety license it is very important there is a single window system no other area no other agents just you have to apply on the postcos.fssa.gov.in okay so there is a common application all over india no other uh, thing same procedures only we are following there is a very clear distinction between registration and licensing registration means the small business uh, business uh, those who are doing a very small business a startup their business is less than 12 lakhs then you have to go for the registration very simple procedure just only 100 rupees if your business is more than 12 lakhs then you have to apply for the licensing in the case of the licensing there is two difference are there one is the state and the central if you are uh, your turnover is more than 20 crore or you are going for doing import or export you have to take the central license kindly note that if your business is more than 20 crore you are going to do that e commerce or import or export then you have to apply for the central license otherwise you have to go for the state license all the rice unit it is coming under the state license only okay so there is a railway and uh, seaport and airport there is a separate system is there and there is an uh, actually fssa we are mainly looking for the safety sanitary and uh, hygiene conditions only so these are the important things with the fssa so i already told that there is a two uh, licensing system one is a state and a central so it is based on the capacity as well as based on the turnover okay if less than 12, 12 lakhs then it is a state registration just 100 rupees if it is 12 lakhs to 20 crore it is a state license it is 2000 to 4500 if it is more than 20 crore then you have to apply for central license there is a 7500 rupees for fees okay so this is a fssa license application area so you have to go for foscos foscos.fssa.gov.in there is a lot of fake and private website is also there uh, please uh, while, while you are applying please ensure that it should be the fssa website only not the third party or private organization or cheating a lot of companies they are cheating they are putting the fake website and asking the money finally you may be pay, you may be paid and somebody else they may be doing the things just very simple thing only just you have to apply for the new license here apply for new license and registration and then in case if you have the license then you have to apply for the renewal of your license if you would like to modify the license for example if you have the state license if you are the manufacturer that's fine very immediately you are planning for this import and export then just click here only modification of the license so you are there you are just have the only registration you are income is little bit increase it is going to nearly uh, that means 18 crore something then you you may 
apply for the modification of this license, you have to click here. You, if you need any help, you have to click here to get a contact of your FSO. The number is and email ID is also available. Who is the food safety officer? Their name, their email ID is also available. Just send the uh, mail to them. Here, FBO says, you can search the FBO. Here, what is the procedure? It is clearly mentioned in here. Okay. So, if for applying for the license, if you are clicking here, this apply for the new license, immediately it will, it will show in this window. So, here there is a three buttons are there. One is railway and another one is a seaport and airport, general. Just if you are clicking this general, then it will asking for the state. Then in top you see that manufacturer and trade all things it is also showing. Just to click whether you are the manufacturer, general manufacturing, you are the proprietary food, then you have to click here. In storage or trade retail, you see the storage is there, wholesale is there, distributor, transportation. That is also another one. If you are doing the transportation for that purpose also, you have to take the transporter, transporter license. Okay. Retailer, food vending machine, importer, e-commerce, trader. So, Whatever the category you have to select accordingly, and then you have to then you have to proceed further. I think our our time is the problem. Anyhow, I will. So after that, you have this is the very important. So here it is coming. What are the food business? It is actually asking to you whether these are the food business you would like to apply. Then click further. Then you see the food category. In, not in here, the third one, here you see the red mark I am putting. Here you have to select if you are the rice manufacturer or you have to put the 6, then 6.1, that is the rice. Then uh, another one, add a ready product, you have to add the product, whatever it may be. Then you have to proceed further. So then finally, this is the application, you have to fill this one. Then OTP, you are, uh, that is uh, your mobile number and email ID is very, very important. One email ID, one email OTP will come and another one is a mobile OTP will come. OTP will come and then the registration number will. That number is a very, very important. So you have to keep the number for further reference. So, uh, um, another one thing, what are the documents? It is very important to upload with the, for getting the license. These are the five important documents which is mandatory to apply for the license. The first is a list of directors with their full name and address, contact details, then Aadhaar card or passport or uh, the voter's card, then proof of the portion of the premises, electricity bill or rent agreement or deed, then whatever the, the, the fourth document is, uh, if you are the single person, proprietorship or if it is a company, memorandum and article of association. This is very important. Then form 9. These are the five documents. It is very important. If you have the NOC, that is also great. Then FSMS declaration recall plan. It is already available on the website of Google. If you are if you are selecting the Google, FSMS declaration recall plan is available. Just to check that out. Okay. So these are the list of directors. This is the format I am telling. These are the format you have to you may be used. These are the water card. These are the documents. It is important. If you have, would like to apply for the importer or, the, or exporter, you may apply uh, for the DGFT license and then you have to apply for the FSSA license. Okay. So then the license automatically it will come to you. If any problem is there, then you have to the you have to communicate through them to mail or they will revert back to you. Okay. Yeah. Once the application reverted, this is the site. You can, the application may be reverted to you. Then you have to see the application. What is the defect? You have to rectify. Again, you have to submit. Very immediately, you have to submit without, without any delay. If it is exceeded more than 30 days, the application may be auto rejected so filling the annual return is also very important you have to fill uh, before may 31st every year okay especially for manufacturer and importers okay 
so fortification also uh, so these are the important things uh, i am going to tell you the, because of time is that very uh, we have a limited time so i may be concluded this session so for packaging there is a 14 uh, areas are there 14 uh, things name of the food ingredients so while you are packing these things you have to keep in mind and then you have to do otherwise you are Uh, product may be misbranded by the food safety authorities okay that's all thank you very much we will proceed to the next technical talk which is on uh, banking and financial assistance and detailed project report preparation to micro enterprises for this session we have with us dr t sendil manager technical state bank of india administrative office trichy Sir has obtained his graduate and postgraduate degree with specialization in veterinary science from Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animal Science University Chennai. He has more than 12 years of experience as a commercial banking professional and specialized in rural banking and schematic loan products and uh, rural micro credits. He conducted more than 193 seminars and training for the farmers and also for other bank officers dealing in agri financing for bringing about awareness of new technology. He has also published various journals and articles related to dairy science and technology. He has prepared model schemes for uh, financing working capital requirement of dairy farmers under the KCC scheme for various districts in Tamil Nadu. Sir was awarded with Young Scientist by the Department of Science and Technology at Anna University, Chennai. We welcome you, sir. Welcome to all. I am Dr. Sendhi. Already that uh, message has given by man. I am Dr. Sentil from State Bank of India Administrative Office, Chennai. Topic is banking and financial assistance, detailed preparations to micro enterprises. Topic is very clear. What are the financial aids to the micro enterprises, and how we have to prepare the detailed project preparation for these enterprises projects report? How we can prepare the project report? What are the things are required? Let this one by one. Before we are preparing or before we are starting any projects, we need to look into the civil. What is meant by civil? What is the importance of civil? Because in most of the banking proposals, we are going. The proposal is rejected by civil itself. If the person has availed any loans. Is a defaulter in any financial institutions, bank, whether it is a private bank or any commercial bank or in any financial institution also. If it comes reflected in the civil report, means the proposal will not be taken up further by the bank. So the civil score for agri loans that is no need to consider. That is no minimum, no maximum score for the agri proposals. Suppose you are submitting the proposal under agri segments, you no need to worry about your score, but you should not be a defaulter. Your right off comes the right off. That is the most most important thing. Suppose if you are submitting your proposal under SME, okay, your civil score is more important, and moreover, you should not be a defaulter in any bank. So. Any person or organizations or FPO, farmers producer company, if you are sorting the proposal, if you are sorting the business before entering the business, you so before entering any business, you should check your civil score. So the civil score is anything is happen in the civil score, your loan will not be taken further. That is the importance of in the banking area. Before we are going into the banking and financial aid to the micro enterprises, we see the details of how we prepare the report. What are all the important things needed? Because we know they know about the project. They know about what is the financial proposal. They don't know what. Proposals. What the business part do means. So you have to give the guidelines. You have to give the outline to the bankers. So the most important thing, based on the 
the banker will decide whether the proposal will take up or not. So you have to submit your proposals. Those who are submitting the detailed report easily will get the bankers will get easily understand for the purpose. You have to prepare the your project report. Now, what are the points needed to prepare the project report? First point is about the applicant. First, suppose you are deciding this is a business. I am I am going to start a rice mill. Processing unit means first you who, who is starting the proposals. You what is the order? What is the what are what are the things required? Okay, about applications. Before you start the business, you should submit your applicant who is starting the business. In the first most important thing of the detailed part of it is about the applicant. Applicant who is the applicant? Just what the experience you are having, where you are studying, what is the experience, where you are going to. What is your and in depth details of the promoters details. Then what is the project? The second thing is the broad. Now what is the business you are going to start? What is the loan amount? What is the margin? How much amount you can able to contribute? How much amount you are seeking from the bank or any financial institutions? What is the repayment period? And these are all the things you have to come into the project. What is the objective of the proposals? Where you are doing the proposals? What is the purpose? This, these are all the things. These are all the most important thing for the about the project. Then technical feasibility. Technical feasibility things means things which are involved in the proposals, the forward and backward linkages. That is, what is the locations? Where is the locations? Where you are doing the your project? Where you are doing your business? Suppose for rice mill, where is the locations? Where you are going to start? Whether that EB is connected to that locations, water facilities available. Okay, whether what is the uh, that uh, panchayat approval or municipality approval is available to that particular land? Land is available, whether it is the own or in the leased land. Okay, these are all the technical feasibilities, and is the uh, uh, site is away from the market area or near to the market area. Okay, where you are going to marketing the your finished goods? These are all things involved in the technical feasibilities. Then financial, this financial feasibilities is the entire thing will take care of our bankers. It is based on your seeking amount, loan amount. It is fully depends on the viability of the financial viability of the proposals. Suppose your uh, your loan amount is too close, your contribution is minimum minimum. Twenty-five percentage. This is a, 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 all bankers will seek minimum twenty-five percentage of the term loan. For CC also, they will seek minimum twenty-five percent of the margin amount. How you are bringing that margin amount? What is the experience you are having? Okay, the DSER, the all the financial parameters will come into the financial viabilities. Then market viabilities, where you are going to sell that your finished goods. Okay, any any kind of you are having any tie up arrangements. Are the who is the sellers? Who is the buyers? How you are showing your buyers? Buyers list we have to submit in the market viability report. Then additional points for the detailed project report is purpose of loan. What is the purpose you are seeking? Okay, suppose if anyone will submit the proposals for the personal, but they will submit for the proposal for some other purpose. Suppose I am from I am starting a business, but Originally, they will need the money for some other purpose. So, the purpose of the loan is very important thing. What is the amount you are seeking? What is the margin amount? And how is the repayment period? How long it will take? Whether it is a five years or within seven years, the repayment period is most important thing. And what is the rate of interest? I am advising the beginners. You don't seek that rate of interest. What is the rate of interest? Is a scheme specific? Okay, you don't worry about the rate of interest. Is always the scheme. What is the scheme? Uh, uh, which scheme you are applying? Based on that, the rate of interest will be applicable as per the RBI norms. Then you have to look into the any subsidy or any interest subvention. Subsidy means that government will provide any capital subsidies for the portion of your project. Or interest subvention also available for some particular uh, proposals is directly given by the 
government government of india or state government or central governments these are all the things now this uh, we saw what are the things required for preparation of detailed project this is the most important thing now you have submitted your proposal to the banker banker first will see the civil report based on the civil report your proposal will take further suppose you are applying any proposal through portal means you have to apply the your proposal through online portal you have to register through online or directly you, you can give the proposal to the branch wherever the branch is available or service area you can submit your proposal to the bank along with your soft copy or hard copy you have to submit your detailed project report already i told then other related documents suppose your business plan how you are taking the proposals your koic documents all koic documents and suppose where is the land that land documents okay you have to submit your land documents and all other approvals you have to submit these are other related papers after your submission of papers the bankers will come for the pre sanction inspection whether the project area is good whether the things the technical okay the thing the area is good whether the water is available power is available okay market area market area is near to the your uh, locations okay these are all things the banker will analyze under at the time of pre sanction inspections after pre sanction inspections bankers will proceed for legal and valuation of your primary assets okay where you are going to start your business that primary location primary area should be valued and legally vetted by our bank any bank okay that uh, they will have some specific panel advocates and valuers they will do that particular jobs suppose in addition that apart from that your uh, locations primary properties some schemes maybe you offer some collateral properties also based on that scheme okay you have to away uh, you have to offer some collaterals for that collateral also we need to extend our legal and valuations then bank uh, what is the term loan or cc or od based on that bank will sanction your loan amount after sanction that documentation will be happen at the branch and mod will be at the register office after that your processing charge and inspection charge will be deducted by the bank then the disbursement will taken by either the single or stage wise disbursement will be happen after that the repayment will be start from your side these are the things from the project preparation to loan sanctions okay then what are the banking schemes available to the micro enterprises this is the original thing this is a wonderful scheme is available in all banks commercial banks agricultural infrastructure fund okay it uh, any entrepreneur micro entrepreneur can use this scheme aif this is a central government sponsored scheme okay for rice mill or all any other processing unit you can cover without collateral security up to 2 crore you no need to give any you don't offer any securities only the primary property how to offer to the bank okay minimum margin is only 10% margin maximum 20% of a margin depends upon the proposals without any securities apart from your primary property you can avail the loan up to 2 crores under this scheme okay and this is the main motive of the proposal is to generate the employment and reduction of food wastages okay this is the most important thing the begin the schemes any rice mill if you want to start the rice mill or any processing unit related to our value additions a rice okay processing you can you utilize the schemes uh, all commercial banks will be available under these schemes 3% interest subsidy is available apart from this if any government state government or central government is giving any subsidy also capital subsidy also if it is available you can enjoy it okay repayment is for all these schemes minimum up to 5 years up to 5 years the government will give interest subvention of 3% suppose your repayment period is 7 years the 2 years you will you will not get any interest subventions okay
under AIF, Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, these are all the activities we can cover. Warehouse, suppose the rice producers, they want to construct a rural goodown or warehouse that we can given by this. Or they want to construct the silos, whether it is a machinery or constructed by the brick and cement also, we can offer. Then back houses, assessing unit for lab constructions also, we can able to finance under this scheme. Under this schemes. Shorting and grading units or before the primary processing unit also we can cover gold chains from start to end okay from fork to that also we can cover gold chain activities also we can cover logistic facilities alone suppose i want to transport the produce from one place to other place for that i want any lorry or any transport whether it is a cooling vehicle or refrigerators or normal vehicle also we can cover under these schemes all primary processing centers, not in depth, only the primary processing. Suppose for paddy, we need to give some initial sort of activities, grading activities no? that we can cover under, uh, especially the rice mill, we can cover under this uh, AF scheme. The second one is a uh, financing to paddy seed processors. Already they have seed, uh, that is a uh, parent seed. Okay, those who are producing the parent seed or that uh, seed processor, no, they need some CC requirement. Already they have the unit. Sir, I need a CC, working capital requirement for day-to-day -day operation. I want to run the plant. I want to run the unit. I want to run the business. So, you can avail that loan under CC. Working capital requirement you can avail. Based on your receivables, what is the amount you are coming or going to the what is the amount you are receiving or you, 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 you have to pay the amount to the or procurement, no? That we can also, that also we can cover under financing to paddy seed process scheme. It is mainly focusing to working capital requirement. Then this is one of the very famous scheme, Prime Minister Mudra Yojana. Under these schemes, the maximum loan amount is 10 lakhs. Maximum loan amount is 10 lakhs. This is a micro, uh, most of the uh, micro enterprises and allied activities up to 10 lakhs loan we can cover under. These loans are also, what are the loans, what are the schemes I am telling you? These all schemes are available in the, all the bank, commercial and private banks, not only in state banks. Under Mudra, Mudra the maximum loan is 10 lakhs, minimum is 50,000. Okay. This is, this is one of the most important scheme, Agriculture Sir, Marketing Infrastructure. So please intimate us when we have to change the slide. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Agriculture Marketing Infrastructure and AMI scheme. This is sponsored by the NABOT and Agri Marketing Department also. Under this scheme, uh, we can you, you can able to construct the rural grounds or warehouse for women entrepreneur you have to maximum uh, uh, get the benefit of 33.33 percent of capital subsidy okay suppose if you see a male entrepreneur you can get the maximum capital subsidy of 25 percent of total project cost not to the loan amount your maximum the total project cost okay 25 percent of capital subsidies available under these schemes Okay, that scheme is also you can utilize under, you can cover under AF. Then one CEO is part time CEO, full time CEO is available. Not part time, full time CEO is available in the form of producer companies. Then last of two years should be profit making company. Okay, it should be profit making, not to the loss. This is all the most important thing. If the, any of the FBO is eligible, okay, you can get the away from the, uh, from the bank. And uh, one of the things, we need 500 numbers of oil in the FBO. Those who are seeking financial assistance, we need 500 numbers. Okay, minimum 500 numbers, one lady directors, minimum five directors, then one full-time CEO, minimum two years operations, 
that it should not be loss making. This is the most important thing for the producer company. That scheme is already covered by the NITAM, I think so. Under the schemes also, we can give any activities, any processing activities or lab or storage packing and marketing and incubation services, maximum of two crores. Okay, maximum of two crores. That scheme is already elaborated by the NITAM. Yes. Another scheme is producer marketing loan or various assets. Suppose that a uh, former producer company or any individuals, they were sold or they are doing any trading activities, he was putting your stock or produce in any government warehouse or in your own or in any private warehouse, you can avail these loans. This loan is maximum of 12 months. Within 12 months, you have to repay that amount, okay, with minimum interest rate. With minimum interest rate, that most of the FPOs can avail these loans. Even for these loans, there is no need of two years of operations. Okay, those who are initially started, suppose that FPO started within a period of six months, they can avail these loans. Then combine harvester. Suppose any individuals, any micro entrepreneurs. Uh, those in the area of Tanchavur or in the belt of any particular place, this paddy is available. Sir, I want to harvest the entire paddy. So, I want to buy a machine, combined harvesters, also available under the schemes. Okay, that one single scheme, that is agricultural infrastructure scheme, you can avail all agri loans without any securities. Okay, that primary properties. Here, the primary properties, the machine. Harvester is the machine. You don't want to give any additional machine, uh, additional collateral securities also. Okay, under these schemes, you can avail up to two crores also loan. Apart from the above loans, Stand Up India, the Stand Up India also, you, you can avail the loans up to two crores. SCST and Women Entrepreneurs. The loan is available for SCST and uh, women entrepreneurs. Maximum loan amount is 2 crores. PM Sivanidhi is uh, for uh, vendors, street vendors, is a minimum 5,000 rupees. Not maximum. Okay, minimum. Maximum loan amount is 5,000 rupees. And PM EGP is already, the scheme is available. This is also maximum 2 crore loan without any securities. Okay, these are all the loans available in all the banks, not only the state bank, in any commercial banks. Okay, commercial scheduled banks, you can avail these loans. These are terms and conditions. Who are all eligible? Any farmers, any individuals, any women or SESTs. That eligibility is scheme specific. Okay. Uh, each and every scheme is the eligibility. Eligibility is there. Based on that, they, you can choose your product. Which product you can, which, uh, which, uh, under which product you can eligible. Okay, you can choose your product. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for such a detailed explanation for taking your time off and uh, clarifying all the queries from the participants. Thank you so much, sir, for joining with us Thank today. You. We will proceed to the next technical talk, which is on uh, packaging solutions for rice-based products. For this session, we have with us Dr. S. Anand Kumar, Associate Professor and Head in Charge. FPST Nipton Tanchavur. Sir has obtained his doctoral degree in Food and Agricultural Process Engineering from Agricultural Engineering College and Research Institute, TNAU Coimbatore. He has designed and developed small scale equipments like continuous type counter current, format dryer, solar pack bed dryer, rotary washer, and uh, solar desalination system. Sir has published over 30 papers in national and international journals and proceedings of national and international conferences. We welcome you, sir, to this webinar. Good evening, participants. After a long discussion about rice, rice-based products, processing methods, this session we will see what are the, the packaging techniques, what are the uh, new kinds of equipment they are using for, particularly when we go for packaging of rice and rice-based products. So, you know, Take the rice, it is the second stable uh, crop in the globe. 
normally we can have the classification of the food items either it can be a perishable commodity highly perishable and self stable commodity whenever we take the perishable commodity and the highly perishable commodity there will be more importance particularly in the storage conditions as well as in the packaging uh, methods and material selections but when we say stable food so it will not be affected by the environmental factor very easily you can store the the rice for one year two year or so in the normal atmospheric conditions and if the the temperature and the relative humidity is within the recommended level so we can keep it the product for longer period and whenever it changes the the when we say the air biotic factor so the the packaging systems are in the storage conditions also will be there even if you see uh, in india uh, we have different uh, varieties of the rice and in general we will say uh, basmati rice and non basmati rice and there are some uh, particular varieties it has some antioxidant or nutritional values and it may be affected by many environmental parameters also in such a case uh, what are the things you are uh, investing in the cultivation practices or processing and the processed food items if you want to store it for a longer period so the uh, main uh, functions are role uh, which can be taken by the packaging materials and methods so here we can give you a uh, overall picture on packaging of uh, rice and rice products so here you can see there are many uh, valuable products we are making out from uh, rice and rice based materials so here you can have the classification either it can be a ready to eat food items you can make otherwise ready to cook food items you can make so here you can have uh, kinds of product will vary with the uh, uh, the nature of the ingredients and the process conditions you can have it for example if you take uh, if it is a ready to cook food items so some of the food items which will be in uh, dry conditions and even if you see the water activity so the the water activity which will be lesser than 0.3 or 0.25 so in such a case this type of products you can uh, you can keep it for a long period also and sometimes if the water activity level or with the dryness of the product it is a little bit higher side or if it is a intermediate much better so in such a case that the fungal growth or mold growth may, which will come and will causes the spoilage so in such a case so that time the selection of packaging materials and the packaging equipment which will be used for such a food items it will be different even you can take under this uh, odop uh, the pm fm scheme so there are the possibilities for the the budding entrepreneurs or is the people those who are all having the industry and they want to scale up the uh, industry in such a case uh, the machinery is purchased for the processing as well as the packaging so the material also will be very so here whenever we select the packaging material so first we have to see the kind of food item what we want to pack it and we must know what will be the expected shelf life of the product whether you want to sell the product within 15 days or you want to sell the product after 3 months or 6 months or 1 year so based on that the the, the types of packaging material selections also will be very and the methods of packaging also will be very so here if you can see particularly in the cereal based product there are many international markets particularly in india and abroad they are playing major role on it they particularly if you take the value added product that is general means kellogs okay and the nestle pepsico so these are all the company they are making even if you take that uh, what we can say that uh, basmati rice that india get oh, you know these are all the company they are uh, they are exporting our indian products into uh, uh, foreign countries and uh, there are many standards they are also following when we go for uh, exporting our uh, rice and uh, uh, rice based product so there are some uh, different standards we have to follow for example if you take that uh, uh, un standards or we can take that arab countries where there if you see uh, sub saharan countries so that the standards and the, the regulations are different if you want to enter into the un market their standards are different and if you want to introduce your product in the uh, canada or us so that type of products are going to that standards are different so in such a case uh, 
uh, even when you want to export your commodity with some particular packaging material, so where, where you want to export it, that country uh, regulations also you have to fulfill it. So that is very important. So here when we come to that packaging, so normally when we talk about the rice based product, as I told you, it is a self stable product. So normally the packaging material, it has to protect your uh, ingredients or valuable pro value added products uh, from either the physical environment or it can be a, 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 a biological environment, otherwise it can be a human environment. So our packaging material, it has to protect your valuable product and it, it will be protecting your uh, materials from the different kinds of that is spoiling. For mainly here you can see that microbial spoilage, either it can be a, a fungal food or a, even you can take some uh, microorganisms or rodents, all these things it can insects, particularly if you take the biology pattern, insects which will easily affect the food grain. So in such a case, your packaging materials, which should have particular uh, the tensile strength or it should have some particular bearing properties so that uh, what we can say, uh, your product can be uh, preserved for longer period. And apart from that, uh, the breakage and damages. For example, when you make some food items, extruded food items, uh, uh, which can be developed based on the rice, rice based product. So, in such a case, the extruded food items will have uh, very less strength and uh, it can be easily breakable by applying uh, even some uh, 5 newton foods or 10 newton foods. Within that, it can be easily breakable. So, in such a case, your packaging materials, uh, which can have the uh, the barrier property for the gases, and this type of extruder product when it is filled with some uh, nitrogen packaging or modified atmosphere packaging. So in such a case, the breakage or damages which will not be taking place. And apart from that, when we go for uh, the transit packaging or the territory type of packaging, so the load which will be acting on the bottom boxes, so that time the product which will get damages. So in such a case, your packaging material which can uh, which can avoid this type of uh, uh, the stresses developed by the, the physical forces or by the mechanical forces during transportation. So that is another important parameter. And apart from that, that preferring and the theft. Okay, nowadays you can see in the market uh, that uh, anti theft uh, packaging materials are coming because either it can be a the sealing materials, it can be there always that uh, the cellophane tape which can uh, revolve around the product so that we can control this type of uh, tape and preferring uh, activities uh, for the, the high value commodity. And in general, that packaging uh, according to the types, we have that primary, secondary, and tertiary packaging. So, that primary packaging, the food item will have direct contact, secondary which consists of many number of primary packed food items and transit packaging or territory packaging. Particularly, it will be a bulk packaging uh, when you want to transport the commodity in your bulk uh, from one country to another country or one state to another state. So, this type of territory packaging will be there. So, according to the usages, either you are going for a primary packaging or secondary packaging or transit packaging. So, the packaging material standards are different, the packaging material strength will be different and the packaging material, the labeling patterns are different. So, these are all the things you have to be considered when you go for uh, your kinds of packaging. So, when we take the packaging uh, operations, normally when we see the industry, uh, the packaging will be the last unit operation. So, you can develop the, the processed rice or you can uh, develop some iron fortified rice or you can develop some value added product, extruder product. So, whenever you, you take any products which is uh, developed from, from rice or rice uh, product, so here the packaging will be the last, last unit operations. But when we see the consumer point of view, so the packaging will be the, the which will play a major role by attracting the customers to select your product. So, in such a case, what is the importance you are giving for your processing? And similarly, you have to give the importance for the packaging also. So, in such a case, there are many life cycles we are following when we take about the processing line, starting the raw materials and uh, to the end of uh, packing. And after the packing, packed product when it reaches the consumers, once it is uh, taken away from the packaging material, the packaging material, once it is thrown away to the environment, there are also there are many life cycles are there. Either it can be landfill, incineration, composting, recycling, or reuse. Okay, the same packaging material can be used in different purposes also. 
So in such a case, either the packaging materials when it is recycled, again uh, it will be uh, properly recycled and uh, it will be considered as a new packaging material, again it will come to the filling line. Otherwise, if it is a reusable packaging, again it will go for some uh, treatment, either it can be a hydrogen dioxide treatment, some, uh, for example, the sterilization treatment, then again it can come to that uh, filling area. So these are the uh, cycles we are following. When we come to the packaging materials, okay, so normally uh, the four packaging materials we are using it for packing up food items, even that rice based product. So mainly that paper, uh, plastic materials, metal containers, and glass bottles. So in such a case, uh, when we take the packaging material, uh, we have this uh, packaging condition for rice and rice based product. Either it can be a unit packaging. So in that case, the unit packaging in the sense particularly uh, uh, the unit packaging, it can be a, a single packet uh, and it can be sold in the market. Otherwise, if you see the bulk packaging, so this bulk packaging, we have 50 kg or 100 kg packet pack, product, it can be packed in the material. So that is the thing we can see. So here, for example, the bulk packaging. So in bulk packaging, uh, we have this uh, jute bag we are use, using. Our woven sacks we are using. Otherwise, uh, nowadays you can see uh, that uh, 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 PP warm bags with the liner material. So these are all the things uh, we are using in the uh, bulk packaging system. Here, the first one is that uh, jute bag. So in jute bag, uh, you can see that uh, clean wire. Okay, that uh, IS standard. For example, one two six five zero uh, jute bags are used. Even according to the sizes, for example, the jute bags are available. Either it can be a 50 kg jute bags or that, I mean, that uh, 100 kg jute bags, the, the bigger in size, this also available. In normal condition, the 50 kg jute bags are highly used. So in such a case, this IS12650, if you see that IN number 2873-1991, the textile type of jute bags. So these are all the things which is used for packing up the rice in bulk uh, packaging system. And apart from that, we have that uh, flexible packaging material, particularly that PP worn bags we are using it. So when compared to the jute bags, that PP uh, worn bags are less in weight. Uh, even if you see that uh, the tensile strength, it has the 15 to 20 percentage elongations higher than the, the gunny bags. So in, in such a case, the weight is very less, cost also very less, and also it has the elongation. Even sometimes you can see that uh, uh, the PP worn bag. Nowadays, it is coming with the liner of this uh, LDP. So, in such a case, the bags will have uh, the strength and as well as it has the moisture barrier so that your, uh, your, your product can be easily uh, protected from the environmental factors. And another thing, you can have this uh, HDP bags or the uh, PPTF bag. So, particularly when we see uh, these warm side bags, okay, so in majority of the Goodons, uh, they are using nowadays uh, these uh, PP warm bags. And also you can see, uh, it can be a combination of the LDP with the uh, PP, or with the HDP with the PP. So here if you see that uh, microns, for example, 50 microns to 75 micron, the thickness, otherwise even you can say it can go up to 120 micron thickness. Okay, the uh, packaging materials, it can be used for packing up uh, this type of product. Then we have uh, another kind that F FIBC bags, okay, flexible intermediate bulk bag containers. So it is also made by that PP warm bag. And another thing, uh, uh, the capacity of the uh, bags, it can be varying with 500 kg to 2000 kg material. And particularly this type of bags, particularly if you see the transit packaging, so in a bulk volume, you want to transport. So this type of bags are highly usable. Even whenever you select this type of packaging material, there are some standards are there. Okay. So that is the ISO standard uh, 21898, or is that UN standard for hazardous materials. Okay. ISO 9001 2008, certified design material. So these are all the things they are all using it uh, for packing of uh, this uh, FIBC material. So this standard they are using it. Another thing we are using that metal containers and this type of metal containers particularly if you see the value added products, okay, the powdered materials when you want to uh, pack it in a 
high barrier material so these metal containers are used so these metal containers are tin containers are used okay that aluminum containers are used otherwise you can see nowadays that aluminum foils are used particularly when we pack any ready to eat food items when we make by using that uh, the rice and rice based product other thing you can see in the market that is bag in box type of uh, packaging material okay so this bag in box type of packaging materials uh, inside we have uh, 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 aluminum foil type of packaging materials i mean the bopp biofuel oriented polypropylene packaging material particularly if you pack any powdered materials okay rice based yes it's powders or water may be that infant food cereal based food items so in such a case this bag in box methods are used even sometimes you can see that a inner material either bopp or a combination of bopp with polyester polyethylene terephthalate uh, because this type of materials which will have higher uh, puncture resistance and also which will have the gas barrier properties and here the thing is uh, the printing uh, when you want to give the printing so here it is very difficult to keep the materials in the the shelf or in that uh, the racks so in such a case the filled materials it can be packed in the the boxes and here you can have that printing and uh, uh, everything even this type of things you can have the uh, continuous packing machines are available so whenever you make such a powdered materials or value added product so this bag and box method even you can see such a product the flaked rice or is that uh, tougher rice so this type of uh, products also it can be packed in this type of packaging and it can be packed in bag and box methods even sometimes you can see uh, for uh, gluing that uh, the edges particularly in the boxes okay so they are using that melt adhesive materials so in such a case the pellets it can be melt at a, a temperature for example 80 degree or 90 degree so that times uh, the viscosity also which will be varying uh, 1000 to 2000 centipies so this type of materials it can have the continuous flow in the sealing area so when the folding cotton comes okay after filling your uh, ba uh, the, the bag material into the boxes okay so that that uh, adhesive materials will be filled then the sealing can be taking place so these are all the things which will be followed in the continuous operations when we go for this uh, uh, bag in box man apart other than that we have other kinds of package material these are all things uh, which will be used for unit packaging for example 1 kg packet or 2 kg packet when you want to pack the rice and rice grains keep all right so in such a case standard pouches are there in the standard pouches even when you uh, when you want to uh, pack the rice in the standard pouches uh, the ziploc pouches are available or uh, that uh, open end standard pouches are available so whenever you want to uh, get this type of packaging materials from the market so they may ask what will be the the volume of the pouches you want it so here they may say that uh, the flat bottom what will be the width of the guts and as well as that side guard so this with ratio we have to tell to the suppliers and accordingly they can supply the materials even so nowadays you can see there are packaging material which is available see through windows because the product uh, what is the product you are packaging uh, in the pouches so that can the product can be uh, see by the consumer so like that see through products are there and this type of packaging material it is a multi layer material it is the combination of polyethylene terephthalate polyethylene and bopp film so these things which will sometimes you can see this type of stand up pouches it can be filled with the gases also for example in map packaging so they may use the nitrogen or modified atmosphere packaging so in such a case this type of stand up pouches are used in the market for packing of the rice based product even if you want to buy equipment under this pm fm scheme or odop scheme so the continuous processing machines are available even you can see the continuous packing unit it can be varying from 2 lakhs to 15 lakh so in such a case uh, uh, in one end you can have a film uh, which can be continuously supply on it okay then uh, the pouch formation will be taking place then sealing can be done so this type of machines are available otherwise you can buy the pouches from uh, industry separately suppliers and you can buy that band sealer machines and there also you can do the, the sealing properly and there are many companies available in our country for the printing and uh, uh, supplying of this type of uh, stand up pouches in the market then we have that uh, transparent window okay resealable zip closures we have okay that hanging walls so this product can be uh, uh, hanged in the, the rods or is that is tables in the market 
Otherwise, you, even you can see that the degassing walls are there. When you buy that uh, coffee, coffee beans, which is packed in the pouches, you can see degassing walls. Okay. Sometimes when you pack this um, aroma, pasmati uh, rice with a particular aroma, otherwise when we fill uh, what we can say that uh, MAP gases, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. So in such a case, when you want to uh, avoid that outside gases intrusions, so nowadays the degassing walls are there. So even if you see some gases are higher levels are increased, so the particular level will be retained and the other gases will be uh, released from the packaging material. So like the degassing walls, uh, packaging systems also nowadays coming. Even if you see that a degassing wall, it will be the cost will be one rupee or one uh, one rupee fifty paise. So these type of things which will be added into the packaging material. Okay, so then you can control the gas level inside the packaging material also. So these type of gas are there. And another thing, press lock uh, material. There is a zip lock cover. You, you you might be knowing, but nowadays there are a zip. Uh, what is the press lock uh, covers are coming also? Okay. So here you can see there will be a, the the spindle and a, the gutter will be there. So when you press it, uh, so the 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 spins will fix the in between the guts. So that time, like uh, instead of that zip lock, one lock. So it will be properly. So here, what will happen? The strength of the the ceiling will be higher when compared to the zip lock. So this type of packaging material, uh, which will make uh, the retarding, uh, which will have um, uh, more uh, uh, barrier, which will not allow the leakages. Okay, once it is sealed, even uh, through that, the gases will not be made. So like that, more uh, uh, tightly, compactly packed, and uh, there will not be any uh, the leakages. Or the spilling of the material will be taking place. So this type of uh, press lock materials are also coming in the product. Particularly, if you have some uh, uh, what we can say the the, the value added product, the, for example, uh, flavored uh, uh, rice plates or flavored puffer rice or something, if you have, so that time they are having this type of snacks food item. They are using this type of packing food. Apart from that, that uh, MAP uh, nowadays you can see. That modified atmospheric concepts are used, particularly in the uh, rice and rice-based product. One is to avoid the insect infestations. We are using it. Otherwise, if you have our food items, if it is uh, fried with the oil, so to avoid that uh, rancidity or uh, fat oxidation, we are using this MAP in the packaging system. So in such a case, there are different combinations we are having. Okay, the amount of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. These are all the two major gases we are using it in MAP. And the main intention is we are lowering the uh, oxygen level inside the packaging. So because lowering the oxygen level, that will control the insect infestation and also that will control the the rancidity and the fat oxidation. So this is another thing. Apart from that, we have that vacuum packaging technology also. The main intention is we are removing the air from the packet and we are tightly packing. So normally, when we take the packaging material, select the packaging material. Which will have uh, a very good gas barrier, and also which will be uh, which will have uh, more flexibility when when we do the vacuuming. Uh, the the according to the the product shape, it has to properly uh, shrink. So some of the packaging materials, uh, for example, if you take that polyamide nylon, okay. So this type of packaging material which can be shrink along with the product orientation. So this vacuum packaging is another technology they are using. And you can see in some of the market nowadays, many people they are talking about sustainable packaging materials. Okay, minimizing the usage of plastic in the industries and making some usage of uh, higher usage of sustainable packaging materials, the packing area. Now you can see in the example. Okay, so here they are. It is mainly made by the paper-based materials. Okay, so they are composite materials that uh, uh, paper-based material. Even you can see that liner with uh, uh, the lead materials also having here. Waxes and here you can have the ceiling and similarly that bottom materials will have more rigidity. So this type of composite materials completely a sustainable packaging material. So it, this is also coming in the market nowadays with the proper design and the proper uh, uh, decorative printing methods. So these uh, these are the things nowadays uh, many people, many countries they are uh, you, they are they are focusing on this type of sustainable packaging, avoiding the usage of plastic in the packaging area. And other thing you can have uh, some of the means of the packaging machinery. So normally when we go for this uh, unit packaging or bulk packaging, okay. So in such a case, some of the packaging equipments are used. 
starting from a small scale, medium scale, and the larger scale. In such a case, when we go for this uh, medium scale, so normal equipment what we are using in the packaging system, it is called a form fill sealing machine. So here we have that uh, what we can say cup filling method. So in one end we will have the product either intended plate rice or puffer rice or the rice, pasmati rice, whatever it may be. In one end the, the film will be uh, 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 released from the, the coil of the roller and when it comes here it will form like a pouches. Okay, then the sealing can be taking place, then the product will be filled into the pouches and the continuous operation will be there. Even the machines are available uh, starting from uh, uh, 20 packets per minute, 50 packets per minute. Okay, so according to the speed, the capacity, according to the unit packaging or bulk packaging, uh, different types of packaging. And another thing, whenever you sell the product in the market, valuable product, so according to the labeling standards, you have to follow the labeling standard. So that you have to follow. So there are 13 to 14 uh, parameters it has to be printed on the labels uh, whenever you sell the product in the market. So in such a case, so these are the things that can be applicable for the value of the product. For example, if you make a value based product, so this is all the uh, uh, labels you have to follow. If it is a raw material only the right, so they are uh, they are only the profit balance is uh, high. And the company you uh, So these are the things you must follow when you go for uh, uh, follow the uh, standards according to the government's regulations. We definitely thank the organizer for giving the uh, opportunities with the participants any doubts uh, regarding the packaging to one of the questions we can answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for such an informative session. So now we will be proceeding with our third technical session on success stories of the entrepreneur. So for this session, I would like to invite Mr. Harish Rao, Quality Head, Agri-Choice Food Products Private Limited, Mysore. Sir holds a postgraduate degree in agriculture and as the Quality Head at Agri-Choice Food Products Private Limited, Mr. Harish Rao was driven by the pursuit of innovation in his personal as well as professional endeavors. He has vast experience in the areas of production, research, teaching, Marketing and Implementing ISO 22000-2019 Food Safety Management System. Sir is a Certified Internal Auditor, FSSC 22000. He has also served as Assistant Professor at College of Horticulture, Mysore and College of Agriculture, Shivamogga, Karnataka. We welcome you, sir, to this webinar. Uh, good Please evening, participants. Very, very good evening. And uh, I do understand it is a uh, high tea time now. And uh, I am sorry, I can't offer you a tea from here. But uh, definitely there will be someone for you to, you will be offering a tea for you. So let's begin our uh, presentation, uh, you know, on uh, my company called as AgriChoice Food Products Private Limited. Now we are into uh, the uh, different types of flowers, you know. Now let me tell you uh, what is our contribution in the society. We, uh, we manufacture different types of flowers, you know, there is broken rice flour, then we manufacture black gram flour. Then we do manufacture beaten rice flour, we manufacture basin, we manufacture nutri rice flour. There are different cereals and pulses flour that we manufacture. Now you will be confused what this fellow is talking about flour. What is he going to do or what is going to tell something about it? From something about rice. So this company is specialized in production and processing of high quality and nutritionally hygiene foods. Uh, along with different types of flours, we go for grits. Previous slide, please. Along, along with different uh, 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 flowers and grits, we go for, uh, you know, different sizes. Now, whenever you come to know, you say flour means you, you people will be thinking only it's a, nearly it's a powder. No. Flour is nothing but it has got, if you, if you grind a, a cereal into a flour, it has got different profiles in it. Like, you know, uh, it will be, some particles will be coarse, some will be fine, well, some will be super fine. So it is a mixture of all these things put together that constitutes a flour. Okay. So our company is expanded on the area of 15,000 square feet area. And uh, we have arguably the best machineries. That is aspirator from Bueller, de from Japan. Now, why I'm taking this name is because this, these uh, machines are really efficient. Uh, in their, uh, you know, uh, processing. Then definitely we have a strong scientific base of uh, from the retired scientists, CFTRI scientists who, you know, guided, guided us now and then. 
now let me uh, put across or put on the record uh, one of the important name of a cftr scientist in 60s and 70s who worked hard for developing an instant dosa and idli mix that is dr deskachar and his team and because of him only today we see the malls and the petty shops flooded with the different brands of uh, you know instant dosa instant idli mix uh, in, in the in the market okay so uh, because of them because of their uh, uh, you know uh, knowledge and that legacy has been taken forward we could meet some beautiful retired scientists to help us to get this beautiful uh, different types of flowers in scientific way see there are certain organized and unorganized sectors i don't want to blame any uh, sectors they are uh, you know uh, they are uh, we respect all the sectors in its way it is so organized sectors definitely they go with some scientific backgrounds so we produce a flower but we produce it in a scientific way like you you can produce a flower in a for a household if you see the household wife will go to the chakki plate plate mill they will give one or two kgs rice and they will make flour in that plate mill and they will use for making it roti or dosa instant dosa or as it is but in flour you know there is one concept one term called as granularity that plays an important role what granule size is there in a, in in you know in a flour see flour can be classified into different uh, according to its profile it can be fine it can be super fine it can be coarse it can be gritty or you can say grits or samolina like uh, uh, consistency so different uh, profiles are there in case of the flour so that will come across when you will see the next slide please next slide so these are the different products which we are uh, you know existing with like you know rice flour bagram flour besan ragi flour oats flour bar barley flour multi grain flour then we have grits in different uh, uh, pulses and cereals like bagram suji for making vada black rice grits for making idli rice grits for making dhokla oat grits for you know breakfast meals and we do trading for pulses and cereals next slides basically our clientele is we supply our material to mpr food mk ahmed bangalore we were supplying to mayas and lifespan mumbai these are our clients who take our products then these are our some few overseas uh, clients like fairway general training dubai best field australia we have slimmers rice in philippines we have you know uh, uh, sm sams export in france and now recently there is one opening by grace of god we will be supplying it to uh, senegal the african country okay so these are our client where we supply the rice flour huh? please keep in mind the rice flour is been exported so this uh, let me tell you the senegal people will be using this rice flour as a base for mayonnaise now uh, this is very interesting slide you see the processing there are three types of processing there is the primary processing there is secondary processing there is tertiary processing now primary processing the uh, processing finish good is a raw material for us now see for making the rice flour the raw material is broken rice for making the rice flour the raw material is broken rice okay so the miller rice miller will process the rice and we will uh, they will give us the broken rice so we are the buyers for the broken rice same thing it is in case with pulses the pulses the outer husk is removed and then uh, it is it is split and then that dal is used for making the flour so miller to buyer so we become a buyer so primary processing paddy process to rice and we get a by product from rice a broken rice so broken rice becomes a raw material for us we in turn do the secondary processing now what type of secondary processing we do see making a flour is a processing right so making a flour of which specification whatever the customer wants or whatever the manufacturer wants so manufacturer will give his specification that i want the rice flour of so much generality please give me this so we fall under secondary processing category so we buy the buy the brokens from the rice miller we make it into a rice flour 
you can call it as size reduction also we are reducing the size right so you can call it as size reduction also so buyer to then from our end we will be giving our raw material that is rice flour to the manufacturer which becomes a tertiary processing now how we is doing the tertiary processing see we manufacture rice flour we manufacture black gram flour we manufacture beaten rice so what this tertiary processing person will do he is a buyer from our end he will make a composition or mixture in different ratios he will be blending it with certain leavening agents he will be adding some acidity regulators and he will be doing some drying or roasting process and then he will be packing it in a packing his own packets and selling in the market so this becomes with primary secondary and tertiary so we are at secondary processing now all begins with two steps our processing yes it begins with two steps what is that step first step is pre cleaning and second is grinding that is size reduction so pre cleaning grinding followed by sieving and packing okay these are the steps which we follow at our end for manufacturing the rice flour or black gram flour now see can you uh, can you give me an assurance that whatever the raw material comes to you will be free of organic matter or foreign bodies can anyone know definitely there is going to be certain foreign bodies or foreign things in your product and that has to be taken care of right now here we take care of this for uh, removing the foreign so see one thing i would like to tell you as the entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs among you people that along with brand you have to build a faith in your brand it is not only brand but only a faith in your brand when it when your products goes to a customer hand he should tear off the pouch bindas and without thinking for a fraction of second that this is going to create a harm for me regarding safety issue no within a fraction of second he is going to use it for his making the another product ready to eat product that faith he should have in your product so developing brand is also important and developing faith in your brand that is most important point nowadays now when i say faith it comes with food safety and quality please keep this my this thing in, in in your mind okay now we will see what is this pre cleaning why it is important see here in, at this stage we are removing all the foreign impurities foreign bodies from the raw material maybe clods maybe unhusked paddy maybe stones maybe metal pieces or any other contamination whatever is present in the raw material has to be removed off and this work is done by pre cleaning unit and our pre cleaning unit has a wonderful machinery called as aspirator which is a buller make and this aspirator works on the principle of terminal velocity where the broken rice or raw material is fed from one end and there is a air 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 velocity air suction which will suck lift the broken along with the light matters at the top and it will suck all this light part lighter particles like dead insect clods uh, frass all this uh, lighter particles will be sucked out and the clean material will come to the next machine is called as the destoner now if you go to any food industry any food industry there you will see there are a different conveying systems now conveying system means what from one machine to another machine there should be some connect now see the best conveyor system you we all have a conveyor system you know what you you have a food right you have a food with your hands the hand is a conveyor yes you take a chapati or rice from a thali and it goes into your mouth so it is a hand is a conveyor right you can't say you can order a hey, come on rice come on go into my mouth a hey, chapati come on tear off and go into my mouth no there has to be a conveying system which will transfer this material from one end to the one machine to another machine so there are different conveying system like one is the screw conveyor one is the bucket conveyor and third is the pneumatic system with air or with pressure we call it as negative pressure okay now after aspiration the material will go to the destoner uh, next slide please this destoner will remove all the stones present in the raw material 
you know how fantastic this machine works this is only works on the air velocity you can see here this is the uh, a tube like structure where the air will be in a negative form negative pressure where it will suck the air and here whenever the rice come inside this dish toner because of the air pressure it will form a suspended bed like continuous bed like uh, you know structure moving ahead and at its base it will float and at its base the stones being heavier it will settle down at the base and at the base there is a mesh and mesh will be in a oscillating movement so what happens the stone which are moving will move back side and will be thrown at the back and the good material clean material will be thrown at the front so backs are rejects fronts are the accepted ones and the uh, your broken rice will be cleaned and go to the uh, bin for grinding okay this is the hammer mill you know hammer mill here the real uh, transformation of the product begins we call it as a size reduction now hammer mill now you know we have a mixers in our house which have a blade right rotating blade with a speed when you put any material in a mixer and the blade will rotate with a high speed and it will bid the material to the uh, finer side we call it a size reduction so here also this hammer mill is a, a, a sort of size reduction thing but you can't just use any hammer mill for you know uh, reducing your material there is a science behind it now what is that science what are those three factors important factors on which your uh, output or which your product uh, is is dependent upon now in a hopper this is the hopper we put a rice inside okay now the three factors are there on which your size reduction material quality is depend upon one is the hammer type now hammer will be there will be series of hammers say in 50 numbers 60 numbers or 90 numbers or there will be beaters so it will be either hammer in series or beater one factor second factor is what is the rpm of the motor what is the rotations per minute of the meter how fast is your motor moving to beat this material and third is what type of mesh you are putting at the bottom of the hammer see how it works you know the hammer will rotate at the faster speed and with its rotation it will take away all the broken rice and it will impact on a plate called as impact plate where the broken rice will be broken into fine pieces fine powder and until and unless there is a mesh at the bottom until and unless that mesh size is obtained the powder will remain inside the hammer mill and once that particular size is obtained the powder will come down and then it is sucked by this is the pneumatic i told you pneumatic conveyor it will sucked by the air and it will go to the uh, uh, vibrosive now see granularity one is the hammer mill and second is the vibrosive this vibro sieve will give you the size of what size you want uh, what size is required for making idli what size is required for making dosa see you can't take any powder any powder size or any uh, black gram uh, powder to make idli or dosa no the granularity is also important for making idli and dosa second most important point is the starch damage how much quantity of the starch is damaged in a in in a, in, a, in a given broken rice that also plays important these are the tea beaters i told you these are the tea beaters and these are the impact plate where the broken will be impacted with this tea beater and make into a powder this is what this is the main equipment or machinery where you are going to get your dependent the granular size product here it is this is two deck sieve food excel now i think everybody has seen seen a sieve right everybody of us we know sieve or this called chalan or jardi in canada now this sieve see whenever you put any material on the top of the sieve and when you start shaking the sieve some material will retain on the sieve and some material will fall below the sieve is it correct the material which falls below the sieve is called trues trues and the material which remains on the top of the sieve was called 
retention or over attain or it is also another term is called as positive another is called as negative positive which remains on the top negative which comes at the bottom so this is the test you i am talking about but this is the industrial and commercial case same thing happens here also from here the material will fall on the top the whatever the overtails are there they will come here and go again for grinding and whatever material will come at this bottom is our product see product can be either retention can be your product or thrust can be your product there the granularity plays important role here the granularity plays important role what is your product you should choose the product according to size what you want and therefore you have to do number of r and d for that you have to prepare the product taste the product look at the sensory evaluation and then decide what type of product you will want okay next slide please sir sorry for the interruption can you please wind it up earlier because yeah, yeah, we are yeah. running out of time our director sir is also waiting in the forum okay okay, okay. no problem yeah. last last two slides yes sir yes please yeah this is the rava making machine here uh, the uh, rava is made it be rava grits and you see the roller roller body and uh, the for rava making idli making we make a rava a small size rava is required so that rava is prepared is from, from this uh, roller body and that machine called as russell sinex uh, that is the you know um, uh, uh, advanced machine from uh, uk based uh, uh, agency so this is about you know uh, a short about our product and production if you have any queries my last slide is there uh, show the last slide my number is there my email id is there you can uh, yeah you can contact me for the any queries any uh, questions uh we i'll be welcome to you know address your question thank you very much for the niftam for giving me opportunity to uh, talk on this uh, you know experience sharing my experience definitely i think there will be some take away from my presentation thank you very much thank you so much sir for such an excellent presentation and sharing your views with us thank you so we came to the end of all the technical talks of the day our honorable director sir dr m loganajan has joined with us i would like to introduce sir to you all sir has obtained his doctorate degree from agricultural entomology in 1999 he is handling national and international research projects on grain storage monitoring of stored product insects and management of insects and food products he has also developed methods for thermal disinfestation of paddy using solar energy sir has trained for gmp hasip and internal auditing by manitoba food safety knowledge center winnipeg canada Sir has also attended and presented a paper in the 11th International Working Conference on Stored Product Protection held at Thailand in November 2015. Sir's area of specialization on grain storage and stored product insect management. Welcome you sir. Please address the gathering. Yes, good evening. Thank you for thank you for the introduction. Uh, good evening to everyone. Organizers and uh, participants. I think it's a hectic schedule from morning to till now. at the same time we have received a lot of information on uh, rice processing and value addition anyway we got a very good speakers from morning to till now almost all the speakers are well experienced on the topic starting from the processing value addition until so many things i have seen the packaging even marketing everything food safety here. all speakers are very nice experienced they have said enough material to you i need not tell much about that but one important thing uh, as all of you know rice is a stable good for us rice and wheat we are mostly using even though so many works has been done and so many industries came up with the rice still huge potential on the rice that is what we want to highlight here that is why we continuously organizing various uh, events like seminars trainings and uh, uh, even uh, we are doing lot of uh, offline trainings for this purpose so many students so many entrepreneurs are participating in this even we are thinking of uh, starting diploma course or certificate course on rice processing because the production is huge at the same time processing we have lakhs and lakhs of rice mills uh, from uh, hulling to highly high end equipments imported from various countries Uh, i think most of you have seen those machineries 
even though so many machineries and the advanced machineries are there are still issues could not be addressed that is what we are continuously doing research on that and continuously we are addressing the uh, things to each and every one the major issue is starting from harvesting till the end product is once the harvest that mash is the major issue so we have to properly reduce the mash content we are going for the storage it's a big issue if you are not properly dry it and store it you will have all insect problem and infestation and infection both will come and ultimately your quality of the grain will be reduced so that is what we are still insisting go for proper drying and go for storage as far as storage is concerned there are different types one is farmers are storing and their house itself for future use and also for the seed purpose so most of the farmers are drying and storing it and the minimum quantity but the traders are procuring for processing in their rice mills or for trading to other industries so they are taking much care on the moisture content they are trying to get the grains at the lower moisture content or sometimes they are procuring it and drying it they are storing it and the third party is procurement from the government both the state and central government like fci and also state civil supply corporation stuff procuring from the farmers and storing uh, in the open storage or in the goodons there is the some issues because you know, due to natural calamities the harvest uh, of the crop coincides with the uh, rainy season there is a possibility of high moisture grains such case what will happen it is very difficult to dry during that season and for the safety of uh, farmers government is forced to procure the grains and store it in the uh, gunny bags that time what is happening due to high moisture content there are germinations there are insect this one uh, fungal infection insect infection everything is happening and there are loss for that there are solutions still uh, we are not able to put all the things together and come up with a good solution uh, as of now we have good very good machineries for proper cleaning drying and also storing we have silos so that is what we are insisting the government to go for silos so that will help pull for reducing the loss because the farmers are harvesting and bringing in bulk in the tractor or some containers and once it is brought to the procurement area we have to properly dry it with a dryer and we put it in the silos definitely the moisture content will be less the loss will be less that is what our objective we are working on that so policy decision government has to take decision we are working on that and after storing it has to go for processing so the processing we have very good equipments and nowadays we are getting very nice rice polished rice full white uh, after uh, doing all uh, grading uh, sorting and um, color sorters are used we are getting very good rice but the question is whether it is good for health or not uh, so we can't say it is not it is good for only because it's a full of carbohydrate the only thing we have to take proper value addition to the grains we take a rice alone it may create some issues because only taking carbohydrates is not good for the health so we that is why we are continuously conducting the training programs on value addition of rice rice is good at the same time we have to take much care on value addition with all vitamins minerals whatever you want for your uh, uh, health it is very very important so i think dr yama given uh, some ideas on those things and apart from that instead of using it as a rice we can go for a lot of different products that is what because we can't take only rice throughout the day so we have to depend on other products so, so the research is continuously going on with rice alone and in combination with millers pulses and other grains uh, there are so many products coming up in the market because that international and international companies are involving in that they, they are also developing lot of products they are also getting technologies from us for developing new products and at the same time we also have a lot of advanced technologies like 3d printing so we can go for uh, customized food based on your age group based on your individual body condition you can go with a customized food using the 3d printing so you can use multiple combination of grains such case you can use rice also that is another important thing and uh, another important thing is the packaging just whatever grains you are produced whatever the products you are developing the ultimate reach to the consumer is based on your 
packaging. So packaging, um, Dr. Anand Kumar might have told a lot of information, but the overall thing is very important. The packaging should help for avoiding the contamination and giving good appeal to the customers and should contain all the information about the product and properly labeled. All these things are very important. If you do everything properly and we are bring it to the market, definitely you have a very good feature for your product. Nowadays, uh, everybody is looking into the packaging. That is why we have created very nice food packaging laboratory. If anybody wants to see, you can come and visit our laboratory. So we have all testing facilities also. If you want to use particular packaging material, you can give it for testing also. Even we are trying with uh, other biodegradable plastics also. And apart from that, Ministry of Passing Industries also providing funding for uh, uh, developing new industries and also for promotion of small scale industries and for export of millers and other things. So there is a scheme, a PMFME scheme. So we are on the nodal agency. We have uploaded all the required technologies in the portal. If you go to our website, uh, uh, NIPTAM website, the right top corner, there is a PMFME link is there. If you click in that, each Crop-wise, materials are available, starting from rice to all the pulses, millets, fruits, vegetable. Um, all those things are there. It includes PowerPoint presentation, videos, and also uh, um, materials to read and get more knowledge on that. Apart from that, we have model DPRs. You can use those DPRs and you can simply fill it up and apply for the PMOPM scheme. You can get funding from the central government. Actually, the PMOP scheme is... Uh, uh, operated both with the central and state joined together because both the government has to share for the subsidy and other things. So the ultimate aim of this ODOP is to create awareness among the public and make use of those schemes from the government uh, with the advanced technologies um, from the insurance like NIFTAMS and other uh, state agriculture universities. We have very good incubation center for product development. Anybody is interested to develop products or anybody wanted to use the already developed product from us, you can come and visit and also you can take the trainings, you can take the technologies from us. That incubation center will help you to utilize our equipment on the minimum rental basis. So if you want to start, you can come and you can come with the raw material, you can develop your products and you can try for the marketing. If you are confident yourself, then you can go for the purchase of equipment. Definitely, we will help in the mode of consultancy and also in the incubation mode. So, these are all the important things already we have discussed. Anyway, I want to conclude. These are the facilities available in NIPTAM. Apart from that, we are also offering BTEC, MTEC, PhD courses. Uh, anybody want to join in BTEC Food Technology, MTEC or PhD in Food Technology. So, you can uh, join and you can get more knowledge. And that any of your uh, children or any of your friends wanted to get information, you ask them to visit our website. Everything is updated in the website. You can get all the information. This training program and all the BMOPME team. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing such inspiring words for the day. So I would like to conclude this webinar. I would like to thank all the technical speakers who have participated in the technical session 1. Dr. K.P. Sudhir sir from KAU on, uh, who has delivered excellent talk on plant layout and missionaries for uh, micro level processing of rice. And Dr. V. Hema ma'am, Assistant Professor Neptam Tanshavur for uh, delivering a session on value added products from rice and byproducts. And Dr. S. Solochana ma'am, Retired Associate Professor Neptam Tanshavur for quality parameters for different rice varieties. Dr. M. Suganti Ma'am, Professor TNA Coimbatore, who has delivered an excellent talk on non-chemical pest management in rice storage. And Srimati Shobana Kumar Ma'am, Field Officer Apida Chennai, for uh, export opportunities for value-added rice products. And the speakers of the technical session to Mr. Subraj N., Deputy Director, FSSA Calcutta, for delivering a talk on food safety and standards for rice-based value-added products. And uh, Dr. S. Sanadakumar, sir, Assistant Professor, for uh, giving uh, advanced technology solutions for uh, packaging solutions for uh, rice-based products. 
Dr. T. Sendhil sir for uh, giving a session on banking and financial assistance and detailed project report preparation to micro enterprises and uh, our entrepreneur Mr. Harish Rob sir quality head agri choice food products private limited for sharing a uh, experience of his uh, successful business thank you so much to everyone who have participated in today's webinar who has delivered excellent talks on uh, of the day thank you to all the participants for their patient listening and their kind cooperation once again i thank everyone on behalf of niftem tanshawar thank you all